This week I'm going to give you a series of lectures on regression analysis, which is estimating the relationships between variables. Regression is used to test models. So, so far you've proposed a model and visually inspected how the data are related. The figure 1 that you created in lab showed the relationship between y and x1. Visual inspection is definitely a good thing to do. You shouldn't go straight to a regression ever because you really want to get familiar with your data. And you did, right? You found some outliers. You really got a feel for what your data look like. Regression analysis allows you to say something else. Uh, it allows you to say with certainty that, to, that the, to, the variables are related and how. Um, and there's something else that a regression analysis does that a two-dimensional plot cannot. It allows you to say how x1 affects y all else equal. In this case, for your project, you'll be holding one other variable, an x2 variable equal. And this aspect of regression will be covered in the next lecture. So what's the basic idea of regression? The idea is that you're trying to figure out how x and y are related. And the most common regression technique is called ordinary least squares, OLS. What it does is it estimates a linear relationship in the form y equals mx plus b, and that should be the familiar formula for a line. y will be the, all of your de, uh, dependent variables for all your observations. x will be the independent variable for all of your observations for all of your countries. m is the slope, and b is the intercept. It's called ordinary least squares because it gives the line that minimizes the square differences between the line and the scatter, po scatter plot points. When people say regression, they usually mean OLS. For example, when XL draws a linear trend line, it uses OLS. OK, so what do you do? We say you run a regression on your X and Y variables. You can do this by hand. There's a formula. And uh, you'll do this in economics or in econometrics in Econ 309. You can do it in Excel using the data analysis option. That's what we're going to do for this class. And then there are other statistical packages that do it a little more elegantly. Uh, economists and political scientists typically use Stata. SPSS is commonly used by sociologists. And SAS, which is an older programming language, is, is still used in many businesses and state agencies. Once you're familiar with one of these languages, though, it's pretty easy to go uh, to move around among them. So when you run an OLS regression, you get the slope and you get the intercept. So it returns those values. You also get a measure of how close the data points are to the line you have estimated. So let's see what that will look like. So for a change in x, I'm going to know how much y changes. That's the slope of this line. I'm going to have the intercept. And then I'm also going to have a measure of how, how scattery these, these points are, how far away they are from the line of regression. So um, slope, as you know, is the change in y over change in x. And I want you, this is a, a useful way of thinking about it, um, that it's a fraction. And you can interpret its value in per one unit terms of the denominator. So GDP per population. Uh, divided by population, that gives you the GDP per person, per one unit of population, which is a person. The government debt as a fraction of GDP, that gives you how much is owed per dollar of GDP. So what's the unit, uh, whatever your unit is on the bottom, it's one of those that the slope is telling you about. So a change in Y over change in X is a change in Y per one unit change in X. And that's going to be a very useful way of thinking about the slope when we interpret the regression estimates. Some definitions. The regression estimated slope is called the coefficient. The OLS estimated intercept is called the constant or the constant term. The other thing that the OLS is going to give us is a measure of the goodness of fit, the deviation from the regression line. So there are going to be data points above and below the line. Not all the, not all the points line up perfectly. If the data points are all pretty close to the line, you have a good fit. And you can say with certainty that x and y are closely associated. If you use x to predict y, you'll be pretty close. But if the data points are all over the place, knowing x isn't going to help that much in predicting y. The regression will still give you a slope. It will still give you a coefficient. But the coefficient won't be all that informative. So the standard error, that's what we call it, that's the measure of how far the data points deviate from the regression line. 
and in lab you investigated the outliers, the countries that were far away from the regression line, and those outliers make the standard error larger than it would have been without them. They're there, they're real, they need to be there, but it's going to give us some information about how, how, close, how well we can predict things. So regression estimates include the standard error of the coefficient. So what you get when you run OLS is you get a coefficient, a constant term, and a standard error. That's going to tell you about the slope, how, how x and y are related. You're going to know sort of the, the constant term, and that's if x is 0. And you're also going to know uh, some measure of the dispersion of the points around the line. OK, so we looked at that already. Next up, regression and holding all else equal.